11 and verse 10. Let's, I'm going to show you how you get the understanding of the Bible because you don't. You lack the understanding of the scriptures. You don't know your nationality. You are people. That's right. Ooh, you're a years ago. That's what you have to understand, but they call it the dark ages because why? They don't want you to know how great you really are. That's right. You get wisdom. Like I can tell the brother to read the scripture and he reads it, and I know how to interpret it for him. Read it. Because he quoted John 3 16, one scripture, and we gave him 10 scriptures showing him what he really meant. Could he understand that? Absolutely not. Why not? Read that again. A good understanding uh -huh. of all that do his commandments. So today's topic is titled, Can Israel Play Sports? Can Israelites Play Sports? All right. As of late, I've gotten the question twice. All right. And, I'm, and you know me, we have some experience in the truth. So when I hear stuff like that, it's a quick, of course not. You should know better. But coming in as a babe, these are questions that our people have. And they don't understand how to explain why not. All right. So that's what we're going to get into today. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Colossians chapter 3, and verse 1. Uh -huh. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, what Christ sit upon the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. The scripture says to set your affection on the things above, not on the things of the earth. So, don't get caught up in what we see the heathen do, alright? From there, let's go to the book of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. It's not going to be a long class. We're just going to go through some history. i um, got a few videos. And just go through some scriptures. Um, because when you play sports, it's not just playing a game. It's, it's not just that. There's spirits that come along with that thing. And we're going to dive into that today. Let's read this. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Because I know I come from a sports background. Officer comes from a sports background. Officer David comes from a sports background. So when we were involved in this foolishness, we had the idea or the mindset that, you know what, I was made to dribble the basketball. Oh, I was made, I was built like this to be a linebacker. I'm not just gonna uh, let all this talent go to waste. That's how we think. That's how they teach us to think. It's not true. That's not what God made you for. Let's read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Read. Fear God. So when it's all said and done, the only reason why you were made, the only reason why you have breath in your bodies was to do what? Fear God. And do what? And keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. That's all the Israelite man, the Israelite woman was made to do. Read. Uh, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Because the only reason we would ask the question on why can we play sports is what? what why do y'all think we would ever ask that question, brothers? Let me see hands. Uh, let me hear Brother Shamir. That's what the brother wanted to do. Why would he want to do that? Why would, let me hear this brother right here. What's your name again, brother? Uh, brother Brandon. Brother Brandon. Let me hear Brother Brandon. Um, he will want to do it because that's where the heart is at. Say that again? I said he will want to do it because that's where his heart is at. Why? Why is his heart there? It's the, love, the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh? All right, let me hear Brother Smith. Um, probably because it's when he idolize um, what's the... Um, Dominant black men that play sports and stuff. Right, because they learned that from the heathen. They saw the heathen do it. All right, so you grew up in America, right? 
Which, what's big here? Sports are big. You got football, you got basketball, soccer, baseball. That's what everybody looks up to. Everybody wants to follow it. So the reason why in return, as you grow up, the reason why you're going to ask your parents, hey, can I play sports? Is because what? That's what you saw. You didn't learn that from the Bible. It's not that you learned it from your parents. It's, it's just reality. All right? Living in Babylon, that's what we see on the daily. But let's listen to what the Most High says. Jeremiah 10 and 1. Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Uh -huh. He the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So the Bible says, learn not the way of the heathen. All right, so we're going to dig a little deeper. Let's go to the book of 2 Maccabees, the third chapter. 2 Maccabees, the third chapter. So to give you an idea of the time period, uh, we're going to read about a, a man by the name of Onias. All right, he was a high priest in his time. He lived um, around approximately 200 BC. All right, 200 BC. This is during the the Grecian or the Greek captivity. Okay, let's read this real quick. We're gonna read now. Second Maccabees three, and start at verse one. Second Maccabees chapter three, and verse one. Uh huh. Now when the holy city was inhabited with all peace, and the laws were kept very well, because of the godliness of Onias the high priest. And his hatred of wickedness. So it says, Onias, he kept the people in order. All right? He was leading the Israelites in righteousness. He hated ungodliness. All right? Although this was during the time of the Hellenistic period. Could you um, get a definition of that real quick? Who knows what uh, it means to be Hellenized or Hellenism? Who knows what that means? Pastor Mike? Don't look at that screen now, but... Ah, oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> Uh, to assimilate. Yes, could you go in depth? Um, like to, to mix, uh, mingle with um, whatever's going on, the popular beliefs or whatever. What time period is that? What, what is that? What, what time, time period did the Hellenistic or Hellenism take place? Um, the, the, um, the Civil Rights Movement and all that? <laughs> oh, Greek. There you go. Who told you that? Somebody whispered Greek? Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me say something else. I, I remember this term. I, I used to love history class, and because I, I had good memory, I remember the term Hellenistic, and I never understood it because I never understood the significance of being a Jew and being like the other. Name. It never made sense. I was like Hellenistic. I was like it never made. But when you come into the scriptures and you understand that the Jews have a different set of laws than everybody else, then you really understand the significance of being Hellenized of the Hellenistic period. Let's uh, go to the book of 1st Maccabees, chapter 1, and let's read 11. 1st Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 11. 1st Maccabees, chapter 1, and verse 11. Uh -huh. In those days went out there, out of Israel, wicked men, who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we departed for them, we have had much sorrow. So it said, wicked men out of Israel made an agreement with the heathen. And this time, it was the Greeks. So this is an example of what? Hellenism. Once again, it says the imitation or adoption of ancient Greek language, dot, customs, art, etc. All right? So that's, that's what they did. Read on. Verse 12. For this device pleased them well. Because they was catching hell. Because they were not um, joined with the heathen at this time, which were the Greeks. Read on. Then certain of the people were so far herein, that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. So they went and did what? They made a covenant or an agreement with the, uh, with the heathen. Read that verse again. Then certain of the people were so far herein, that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. So he gave them licenses to do after the ordinance of the heathen. So they wanted to be like the Greeks so bad that now they became citizens. All right, he gave them license to do as they did. All right, y'all with me? All right, read on. Verse 14, uh -huh. whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem. They did what? They built a place of exercise at Jerusalem. So if they had to build a place of exercise, what is a place of exercise, brothers? A gym. A gym. Can you look up gymnos? Gymnos. Gymnos is the root word of gymnasium. So that is what? A place of exercise. So just so y'all knew, brothers, and some brothers who don't know, so y'all can understand 
why sports, we should, why we shouldn't play sports, and we're going to paint the picture for you in just a moment. So, they wanted to be like the heathens so bad, they, they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem, meaning they never had it before. So, understand this, the Israelites, we didn't come up with sports, that's not our custom. So as repentant Israelites learning our heritage, learning our customs, we need to get back to what? We need to get back to righteousness. How, what about all the brilliant men, all those valiant men of war that were skilled in all uh, different matters of science, mathematics, all of that? What about those men? That's how our forefathers rolled. So we need to get back to our heritage. Put all the way this foolishness. Read that real quick. Word, gymnos, meaning, naked, script, bare. Unclad, bare, or mare. So, he naked. Exactly. Today's it means to work out in the nude. So read the verse again. Verse 14. Uh-huh. Whereupon they, be, they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem. So they built a place to work out naked in the Holy Land. In our Father's homeland. The, the land that the Most High God chose to place his name there. Y'all with me? All right. All right. So, let's move on. Um, let's go to the book of 2 Maccabees chapter 4 and 18. Before we read it, I want to give you a little um, synopsis. So, understand this. The first Olympic Games were held anywhere between 776 and 760 B.C. So this means what? When it goes to the B.C. era, you always count down. So from the 7th century um, B.C., we're going all the way to the 2nd and 1st century. That's when we'll read about Onias. We'll read about Wicked Jason, and we'll read about Judas Maccabees and his brothers. All right, so it shows you what? The Olympic Games, they were keeping those games hundreds of years before we even went to Greece. All right, y'all with me? All right, let's read this real quick. This shows the Olympic Games right here, and it was held in a certain city. 2 Maccabees 4 and 18. 2 Maccabees chapter 4 and verse 18. Uh -huh. Now when the game that was used every fifth year was it, kept at Tyrus. Alright, it says now when the game that was used every fifth year was kept at Tyrus. Tyrus is the land of Tyree. Alright, that's where it is. You've heard of Tyree and Zidon, right? That's in the Middle East. It's north, north of uh, Jerusalem. Okay? So it says, now when the game that was used every fifth year was kept at Tyrus. This game is talking about the Olympiad. It didn't get changed to every fourth year until after the Romans took over after 193 AD. All right, so this is talking about the Olympic Games. The first Olympic Games were held 776 to 770 around that time. First Olympic Games, so it showed they were doing this custom every five years, every five years. And this particular year, it was held in, Ty in Tyrus. Read it again. Now when the game that was used every fifth year was kept at Tyrus, the king being present. The king being present. So, for example, think about the Olympics where you had Jesse Owens. Who was in the crowd? You had Hitler in the crowd. You had all these presidents, all these, all these leaders from all these different countries. There's nothing new under the sun. So understand, in Tyrus, they had what? All nations at Tyrus having foot races, having naked wrestling, having javelin throws, having discus, discus throws. That's what was going on. All right? Uh, from there, let's go to... Second Maccabees, yeah, four, and right, let's start at the first verse. Second Maccabees, chapter four, verse one. Uh -huh. This sign, and now of whom we spake before, having been a bereaver of the money, and of his country, slandered Onias, as if he had terrified Heladarus, and been the worker of these evils. Read. Thus was he bold to call him a traitor, that had deserved well of the city, intended his own nation, and was so zealous of the law. All right, so when you read the book of 2 Maccabees chapter 3, you'll read about Simon, all right? He lied on Onias, all right? It was uh, a dealing with uh, filthy lucrative, a dealing with money and finances, all right? So make sure y'all read that. Just want to get to the point today. Let's read on. But when that hatred went so far that, that by one of Simon's faction murders were committed, read, Onias seeing the danger of this contention and that Apollonius as being the governor of Caesarea and Phoenix did rage and increase Simon's malice. He went to the king. He went to the king not to be an accuser of his countrymen, but seeking the good of all, both public and private. Read. But he saw that it was impossible that the state should continue quiet and Simon leave his folly, unless the king did look thereunto. Verse 7. But after the death of Seleucus, Seleucus, Seleucus when Antiochus called Epiphanes, took the kingdom, Jason. So that was, I'm sorry. 
So this time period, I just wanna, I wanna get y'all on the, uh, the time period so you know what's going on. When Jason took over during the time of um, Antiochus Epiphanes, this was around 175 AD. All right, so it's approximately 600 years after the first Olympics. All right, read that verse again. Of Seleucus, when Antiochus called Epiphanes took the kingdom, Jason, the brother of Onias, labored underhand to be the high priest. So when it says that Jason, the brother of Onias, labored underhand to be high priest, it means what? He went behind Onias' back. All right, he was covetous. All right, let's read on. Promising unto the king by intercession, 303 score talents of silver, and of another revenue, 80 talents. So he promised the king, Antiochus Epiphany, all of this money. He said, you know what? Hey, I'll give you all of this, and I'll make an agreement with you if you set me up to be high priest. Because, just to paint the picture for you, brothers, the way it is now, America is what on earth? The superpower, right? So they are the ones who dictate who are the leaders in these various countries. You all with me? So that's exactly what happened on, in this time. We had Onias, which was a priest of righteousness. He hated wickedness, but he had his covetous brother, Jason, go behind his back and make a covenant with the king at that time to do what? Take his position and be high priest. All right, uh, let's read verse 8 again. Verse 8, promising unto the king by intercession, 303 score talents of silver and of another revenue, 80 talents. Uh -huh. Besides this, he promised to assign 150 more if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise and for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen. Stop. So it says, and for the training up of the youth in the fashions of the heathen. So he hated his people so much. He had that uh, covenant to spirit where he wanted the preeminence of everything. That not, not only does he want this place of exercise built in Jerusalem, he wants to train up the youth from day one. Now, think about modern day today. Don't you see the same thing? You have youth sports. You got elementary, uh, junior high, high school, collegiate sports, all the way up into what? Professional sports. So we wonder why our children turn out the way they turn out. Oh, he can't focus in school. Oh, he's a whoremonger. He's a robber. He's a murderer. Because you have to understand, these sports put a spirit on you. What comes with sports, pride? You, oh, I'm the best. I'm the best. You don't think about your brother. Lust. Because you get what? You get exposed to what? Basically anything you want to get exposed to as a, as a, uh, a jock is what they call it. Um, what else? What else? Uh, entitlement. Entitlement. Because I know when I played sports, the football team came before everybody. I'm talking about it was so bad, I would walk out of class and just go to the gym and, and play. I was like, I'm on the football team. They can't tell me nothing. I used to do that every, almost every day, actually. It didn't matter what the football player did because, you know, hey, just get coach here. You get a referral. About to get kicked out of school, hey, call coach. And then you're good. So you feel that sense of entitlement. I can do whatever I want, and I'm good. You also have homosexuality. Think about it. You're around men all day, wearing spandex, taking showers. Think about this. They go for the women, too. They are putting that same atmosphere. So understand, playing sports is just not playing sports. There's a spirit that comes behind that thing. And this brother was so wicked that he trained up Israelite children from youth to do that exact thing. Read it again. Verse uh, 9. Uh -huh. Besides this, he promised to assign 150 more if he might have license to set him up a place for exercise. Read. And for the training of, of youth in the fashions of the Hebrew. Uh -huh. And to write them of Jerusalem by the name of the Antiochians. So the name of their sports team was what? The Antiochians. To get to pay homage to what? To the oppressor. And that's exactly what we do today. All right, read on. When the king had granted and had and he had gotten into his hand the rule, the forthwith brought his own nation to the Greekish fashion. Now that is called what? What word is that called? Hellenism. Hellenism. Read that again, officer. Which, when the king had granted and had gotten into his hand the rule, he forthwith brought his own nation to the Greekish fashion. So you have to understand, we was at camp today. People said, oh, it's only one race, the human race. It's never been like that. The scripture just said he brought his own nation that had their own customs, laws, dietary laws, all of that. He brought them to the Greekish fashion. They forgot their heritage and became Greeks. All right? You understand that, right? Uh, read on. 
And the royal privileges granted a special favor to the Jews by the means of John, the father of Epimus, who went ambassador to Rome for amity and aid. He took away and putting down the governments which were according to the law. He brought up new customs against the law. He brought up new customs against the law. So what? So Greece would be his ally. So when they had troubles in war or something like that, the Greeks would come to what? Jerusalem's defense. Read. For he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself uh -huh. and brought the chief young men under his subjection. So, you know, the finest bucks, like my brother Officer David right here, big, strong brothers like this, he brought the finest men under the subjection to play those sports. Read. Under his subjection, it made them wear a hat. It made them do what? It made them wear a hat. Now, I didn't get this video. Could you type up signing day for me real quick? All right, so that custom still goes on today. So when you see, there's something called signing day. Every February, every February, it's nationwide. It's called signing day. It's huge in college football. Right, and I'm sorry for not using other sports as an example. I can only speak of what I went through. So signing day is something huge. Officer can attest to it. I know Officer David knows about it as well. Uh, they got the draft. The draft That's as well. Uh, the first thing they give you on the draft. All right. Uh, they call your name for your pick. And the first thing the white man come and hand you, is a hat to put on your head, all right? It's the very first thing that you get, all right? And another thing with these sports, uh, the officer touched on, all right, it cripples you. Right, right, right. All right, I had a chance to play at the top over here. All these guys, so they don't identify with your struggle. All right, man, they separate themselves. And our people put them on a pedestal, all right? And it cripples them for the real world um, Cause nine out of ten, eight out of ten of them is gonna come back down after they quit playing. Um, now they gotta manifest again. I'm um, to society, getting a regular job and working, and it puts you behind. Right. All right. So here's an example of giving them a hat. And this is what these young men look forward to all of their lives. They live to do this instead of living to please God. Of course, we'll see them today. dribbling the basketball since youth. So he was in that place of exercise every day, getting it in, until the point where he made it, you know, to a collegiate atmosphere. Read it, read it again. But he built gladly a place of exercise under the tower itself and brought under and brought the chief young men under his subjection and made them wear a hat. And made them wear a hat. Showing what? Kansas University owns him. As officer. As officer. When he, he played big time, I played small time, he played big time ball. So, you know, speak on that real quick, speak on that. What? Oh, yeah. I want you to speak on per diem, I'll okay. speak on stuff like that, you know, food, gotcha. all that good stuff. Gotcha. Well, yeah, you, you are, um, in, when you sign a scholarship, all right, the first thing, I don't know if you remember uh, having compliance meetings. That first week you get there, well not the first week, but right before the season, you have a compliance meeting. And basically you sign over all your rights. Back when they was making, I don't know if y'all ever played video games, but you had to sign over all your rights for licenses, jersey numbers, all that stuff. You can't get a job. You 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 have to rely solely 
on the on the college for all everything. So if you're not happy with what you got, if your people don't have funds, your Pell Grant, you gotta make your Pell Grant work. You can't work, you don't have time to work. You wake up, you work out at six, meetings at 7.30, class from eight to one, special teams meeting at 1.30, team meeting at two, position meeting at 2.30, practice from two to six, eat, study hall, go to sleep, do it again the next day. That's your life for four to five years. So, do you get the person? Yeah, but you, we ain't gonna show the video today, but there's a movie they made, it's on Netflix. It's called, um, forgot the name of it. But billions of dollars to generate. Y'all know how much money he got that day? When he put on that hat and y'all proud? Not a dime. Zero. He didn't get a dime. He thought he made it. He didn't make a damn dollar. I got that same picture at my house. I didn't get no money that day. None. I got some money right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Officer David, yeah. Basketball players. Yeah. Basketball players get paid. Football players. I'm going to tell y'all the different side of it. All right. Uh, the chiefest. Oh, of the young man. Brother, why are you glorying in the green shit? I'm not glorying in the green I'm telling you the other side of it. Brother, I'm starting to the SEC, man. Uh, the chiefest. So I'm get a little bit of extra up under the table. I know they come out and tell everybody, no, man, this ain't going on. It's going in, in the SEC, in the MAC, in JUCO, everywhere. All right, because you are a ticket on the, for that school. Man, if he goes on the pro, oh, man, he came from Kansas. Tons of money generated off your back. Exactly. Uh, let's read on. Let's read on. Verse 13. Uh -huh. Now such was at the height of Greek fashions, an increase of heathenish madness through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch, and no high priest. So it said not only were they playing sports, but because they were playing sports, it said unrighteousness increased. Because why? It's the spirit that comes with sports. Just like the officers just gave you the example. It's pride. It's you no longer care about your people. So you'll do anything for what? Your oppressor. All right, all types of uh, wickedness comes along with that thing. Read on. Now such was at the height of Greek fashions an increase of heathenish manners through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch and no high priest, uh -huh. that the priest had no courage to serve anymore at the altar. So they said, you know, to hell with sacrifice, I'm gonna go watch this game. Is that how brothers be? I know new brothers. I know they struggle. College football season starting again. He said, dang, I just repented. But I want to watch football, though. Nah, that's how that's how the priests were. They say, you know what? Forget the sacrifice, man. I got to go watch these naked men wrestle. I got to go do that. I got to go watch this man throw this discus ball. That's what they wanted to do because think about it. The way Esau does sports, they do it big. We went to FAMU and prophesied at a FAMU game. Barely anybody on the street. Y'all just waited about two weeks before the state have a home game. This whole city is shut down. That's how Esau get it in. So they make it big, extravagant, to the point where if you're not rooted in God's laws, that's where you're going to go. You're going to say, oh, forget this, man. This I got to go over here. All right, read on. That the priest had no courage to serve anymore at the altar, uh -huh. but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hasted to be partakers of the of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise Read. after the game of discus called them forth. So they was forsaking God's commandments to watch the game of discus. That's that's simplicity right there. Uh, Read verse 15. Not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. That's the issue. And that's the question I asked y'all brothers. Why do our children want to play sports? Because when they see God's laws, they're like, that's boring. And then when they see the glory of the Grecians, everybody's going that way. So they're learning what? I want to be like that. I want to be popular. I want to get the girls. I want to have fun. But this is how you explain what to your children. When it comes down to it, you can give them this history. Showing what? Hey, our forefathers were killed because of stuff like this. Our forefathers were, um, what's that? Think about Rome. They, we were thrown into the arenas and eaten by lions because of stuff like this. So you have to be able to go through the history and teach your children why they should not play sports. 
All right, we're not done with the class, but you can understand by about, about this scripture, you should know you're not. Nah, we shouldn't play sports. It's not for us. It's not our custom. All right? Let's go to uh, Sirach 10 and 12 real quick. Sirach 10 and 12. It's going to touch on some attributes that comes along with sports, some spirits that are brought on you. And also, before you hit that, yes, sir. as much time and effort as our, as, our, as our families in the past have spent on sports, why do we not put that same time and effort to push our children into different avenues, right. such as making sure they're going to, uh, they want to be in computers. They go to programming every day after school, like you take them to practice. Right. Or if they want to learn how to draw, they're the best artists in the world. Or if they are, they want to go into construction, that they get a, um, an internship. Or if they want to be a lawyer, why they're not working in the office every day? Because if it was sports, you can make sure they go to practice, you pick them up, you take them home, you pay the team fees, you get cleats, you get jerseys, all that stuff. Traveling to hotels, why don't you, and you push them into that. Right. Why would you not push them to be a doctor? Why would you not push them and support them to be a lawyer? So on and so forth. Because you'll find the funds for other stuff. I know my, my mother and father, they both work, but they would complain all the time. But I would get it. I would get it. And I saw everybody else on the team would get the same thing. We got to retrain our minds. We got to retrain our minds to understand that ball is going to go flat one day. It's going to go flat. Y'all understand that? When you, when you get that piece of paper that says you are a licensed and operating doctor or lawyer or whatnot, not saying that that's the kingdom, but you can do a lot more for your people than, than uh, give them something to talk about in the barbershop. Y'all understand that? Right. Sirach 10 and 12. Sirach chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh -huh. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God. We just read that in uh, 2 Maccabees. The beginning of pride. So if you didn't have a definition of what pride is, this is what it is according to the scriptures. The, the priests... They said, you know what? I'm not sacrificing anymore. I'm going to go watch sports. Read it again, officer. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God. That's what? That's departing from God. So sports brings what? The spirit of pride. Read. And his heart is turned away from his maker. So we, we delighted in the glory of the Grecians more than the laws of the Most High God of Israel. All right. Next scripture. Let's go to Psalms 12 and 3. Psalms chapter 12, verse 3. And this is another way, also, you know that, that sports bring pride. Athletes all the time, what do a lot of athletes, big time athletes, what do they have around them all the time, brothers? Huh? Not yet woman, but what else? Go ahead, somebody said it. I heard two people say it. Somebody grabbed the mic and said it. Uh, entourage. Entourage, right? And a lot of time they're in team sports. If you're a boxer, that's fine. But if you're in a team sport, who should be your entourage if you roll in the right spirit? Teammates. Your teammates. That's letting you know when you see a brother and there's six people around him all the time. None of them on the team. What does that let you know? Who is that brother all about? Himself. That's what sports build. It build that selfish behavior. I used to hate brothers on our team that all their friends, none of them was on the team. I'm like, who the hell are these people, man? Well, they don't even play with us. Why are you, why are you spending time with people but that spirit, and you'll see that we don't roll like that in the truth, because we got scriptures. Right. So if I see that now, I can, I can nip it in the bud. But y'all gotta understand that stuff. It builds a very, very selfish spirit. All right. Uh, uh, Psalms chapter twelve, verse three. Psalms chapter twelve and verse three. Uh huh. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things, and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Uh, just like the office was going into. When he rolls with that entourage, he's saying, what? Well, I'm the best. And he likes to hear it a lot. <laughs> That's why he rolls with those brothers. All they do is gas his head up all day. Because why? When he goes to the store, they get something. When he goes out to eat, they get something. When he goes to the car dealership, they get a car. All right? Read it again. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Because when you are an athlete, you are entitled you are entitled, you get whatever you want, everybody's your friend. You are the most popular, you can do no wrong. All right? So, but the most high God says contrary. Those who speak proud things, they will be cut off. So why would we train up our children 
ain't something that can get them put to death. Why would we even tempt them? Why would we put them in that atmosphere or that situation? All right, from there. Let's go to the book of uh, Proverbs 16 and 5. 16. I'm sorry, 16 and 5. Proverbs 16 and 5. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 5. Uh-huh. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Everyone that is proud is an abomination unto the Lord. And honestly, you have to have a sense of, of pride playing sports. In order to be the best, you got to think you are the best. After you convince yourself, you know, the production does show forth after a while. But why not be the best in being an exhorter? And somebody who can exhort their brother to great works. Why not pride yourself on being something that is the best in God's laws? Think about it at, at the, in that aspect. All right? But we think about things that are no profit. Give me that in Ecclesiastes, but folly. Yeah. Was that 10? 10 and 6? Yeah. This is the problem with our people. We, we hold things that are of no profit to the high esteem. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 6. Uh -huh. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. So it says folly is set at high dignity or high esteem. Meaning what? Things that don't profit us in the long run, like Officer said. You play those sports or whatnot. Say you make it or you don't. After you retire, after you stop playing those sports, the toll that that took on your body, that's what a lot of people don't take into consideration. You, you are out there working hard for your oppressor, but now you're crippled. You have body aches. You have, what's it called, the concussions. Brothers lose their mind playing football to the point where they kill themselves. Yes. They cause harm to their, to their family. You want to speak on that? Okay. But no, these are the things that, that come along with this one sport. All right, from there, let's go to the book of Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 8. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 8. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 8. Uh-huh. What have pride profited us? So did they ask the question? Because when it's all said and done, the righteous shall be saved. So the scripture asked the question, what have pride profited us? Read. What have pride profited us? Or what good have riches with our vaunting brought us? So it asks the question, what good are our riches with us flaunting it, with us being boastful and pride, prideful about it? What good has it got us? And the answer is nothing. Jump up in the verse. Um, start at verse 1, officer. Verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him, and made no account of his labor. And made no account of his labors. Officer David hit a key point. When you're in that seat, you don't care about your people because your, your life is different from them. So you're not living the day-to-day -day struggles as your people are. Read it again. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted them and made no account of his labors. And made no account of his labors. All the great works that he did for his people. The rich man, the sports player, he's not thinking about that right now. Read on. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all they look for. So when you're sitting in those seats, when that day comes, when judgment day comes, when salvation comes, the rich man, the prideful man, he's going to be standing in awe looking at the, low, the lowly man that was humble, who, who went through it while he was on earth, but he got his reward. Read on. Three. The, the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all they look for Three. and they repenting and groaning of, for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves this was he who had sometimes in derision and a proverb of, bero of reproach so they're saying this was the brother who, who was teaching outside my arena say like, damn I remember these brothers Read. we fools accounted his life mad so they said man y'all broke man y'all some bums y'all some bums Read. And his end to be without honor. Uh huh. How is he numbered among the children of God? So they're saying, how in the world do these righteous, those humble people, how did, how are they the children of God? Read. And his lot is among the saints. Uh huh. Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us. Uh huh. And the sun of righteousness rolls not upon us. So it's saying, you coveting after these sports, coveting after the, the spirits that come along with playing sports. You are not going to inherit the kingdom. Read. 
We worried ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where they lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. Because the way, why didn't they know the way of the Lord? Why is that, Brother O'Daniel? Think about the scriptures we went through so far. Because they didn't even do a person so much. Like, they want to focus on it. They want to be like, um, like the person of the other nations. Okay, so when you play sports, it does what to you? Put spirit on it. Okay, think, what does pride do for you? What is pride? When you think highly of yourself, like put yourself over your brothers or your people. Okay, according to the scriptures, Brother Zephyr and I help him out. You along the right lines, I'm just looking for you to say it a certain way. Oh, you're trying with the pride with pride. Right. Oh, uh, when well, one departed away from God. When well, one departed the way from God. Read verse 7 again, officer. Verse 7, we worried ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. So they did everything except what? Keep God's commandments. And that's what sports does to you. It turns you away from your maker. Read verse 8 again. Verse 8, what have pride profited of us? So they're now they're saying... What has turning away from the Most High God of Israel profited of us? Read. Or oh, what good have riches with our vaunting bodies? All the riches that come along with it. Read. All those things are passed away like a shadow. All those what? All those things are passed away like a shadow. Just like the officer said, the ball is, is going to run out of air one day. All of that's going to be passed away. But judgment is inevitable. Judgment is coming. That's something we cannot escape. So why would we waste our time getting caught up in sports when we know judgment is coming? Y'all with me? All right. Uh, from there, let's go to the book of um, Luke 7 and 31. I just want to say one more thing. I know we're running into your time. Um, but it's like what the author was saying into. Uh, going into sports, they inspire to be onto this because what do they see? On TV, they see commercials. They see the shoes, they see the movies, they see the clothes, so on and so forth. It's our job, you brothers and sisters that are creative, to push our leadership. They should have that same exposure. So when children, not only like, like the commercials, when children see the men of God in that same light, right. that's what they're going to desire to be. Right. When, they see, when they see the men in, in the garments, when they see us at camp, when they see we're making movies and documentaries and things, we got to create our own, I was watching a movie called The Spook That Sat By The Door. I don't know if any of y'all ever heard that. But a dude was working for the CIA, and they taught him everything he knew, and then he quit, and he came back to his people. And when he was setting up his people, he was teaching them everything. One of the first things he said, we need to set somebody over the propaganda department. Because he said, our people need to see themselves in a different light. Y'all don't understand how powerful imagery is. Right. When you think of North Carolina, what do you think of? North Carolina, University of North Carolina. The Tar Heels. How do any of y'all know North Carolina though? Because of Michael Jordan went there. That's the only reason. Name another athlete that went to North Carolina. Can't do it. Because his imagery of him playing in them little shorts at, at the University of North Carolina is ingrained in your mind. That's why everybody loves Baby Blue, so on and so forth. But those images are ingrained in your mind and you don't even know it. That's the same thing we're doing right now when we're pushing this purple and gold throughout the four corners of the earth. Right. So y'all got to understand that. All right, Luke 7 and 30. Luke chapter 7, verse 31. It also brings a spirit of immaturity. You never grow up playing sports. Think about it, rationally. If you spend your whole life playing a game, are you ever going to become a man? No, because you're playing a game. It's, it's a game. Games are for what? Children. Games are for children. Let's read that. Luke chapter 7 and verse 31. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Christ compared the children of that generation at that time as children. I compare these, these men of this generation as infants. It's horrible. Nobody can think for themselves. Nobody wants to take accountability for their actions. Officer said earlier, um, if we give all of the effort to football or basketball, whatever sport it may be, why don't we give the same effort into something that's actual, actually profitable? Uh, let's go to 2 Maccabees 2 and start at verse 13 real quick. 2 Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 13. You know what? Start at verse 1. Verse 1. It is found in the record that Jeremy the prophet commanded them that were carried away to take up the fire 
as it have been signified, and how that the prophet haven't been given the law, give them the law, charge them not to forget the commandments of the Lord, and that they should not err in their minds when they see images of silver and gold with their ornaments. So that could apply in what? When it comes to you, when you see the glory of the Grecians, don't get distracted, or the glory of the heathens, don't get distracted, stay focused on the commandments, read. And with other such speeches, exhorted he them, that the law should not depart from their hearts. That the law should not depart from their hearts. Jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. The same things also were recorded in the writings and commentaries of Nehemiah. How that he, and how he founding a library gathered together the acts of the kings and the prophets and of David and the epistles of the kings concerning the holy gifts. Uh -huh. In like manner also Judas gathered together all those things that were lost by reason of the war. We, we had, and they remained with us. So, these brothers gathered all of our lost books because we had a lost what? Lost heritage because we got overcome by the other nations. Alright, read on. Wherefore, if ye need thereof, send some to fetch them unto you. Whereas we then about to celebrate the purification, we have written unto you, and ye shall do well if you keep the same days. Read. We hope also that God, that he delivered all his people, and gave them all inheritance, and the kingdom, and the priesthood, and the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And he promised in the law, we'll shortly have mercy upon us, and gather us together out of every land under heaven into the holy place. Free. But he hath delivered us out of great troubles, and hath purified the place. Read on. Now as concerning Judas Maccabeus and his brethren, and the purification of the great temple, and the dedication of the altar, and the wars against Antiochus Epiphanes, and Yepeta his son. Stop. So it says, now switching the topic to Judas Maccabees, it says... The wars against um, Antiochus Epiphanes. Why was uh, Judas Maccabees warring against Antiochus Epiphanes? Let me see who knows the history. Who knows the history? Y'all brothers never read Maccabees? For real? You never read Maccabees, brother? Yeah, you need to read Maccabees. Who's been with us for a year? At least a year. Okay, yeah, open Thank you. Uh, the story behind it is because they knew Judas uh, was valiant at war. He was very tactical. Was no, no, no. The question was, why was Judas Maccabees fighting against Antiochus Epiphanes? Because uh, his laws was against all the Israelites trying to make them forget uh, God's limits. Right, right. So that's contrary to what Jason did, right? Jason said, to, uh, forget God's laws, let's follow the Grecians. And, uh, Judas stood up for righteousness. All right, let's go back to it. Uh, verse 20. Verse 20. And the wars against Antiochus Epiphanes and Gepeda his son. And the manifest signs that came from heaven unto those that behaved themselves manfully to their honor for Judaism. So that being but a few, they overcame the whole country and chased barbarous multitudes. So and this is going into the great acts of Judas Maccabees. He stood up manfully, similar to what Onias did. He hated wickedness. All right, he, uh, Judas followed after the... Uh, his, his dad's steps, Matthias, when you read it, first Maccabees, the second chapter, he carried on the fight of his father, all right? Because our people were being oppressed, our people were being uh, becoming Hellenized, and they were sick of the condition of our people. So, let's put it today, let's put it in today's perspective. If we realize that our heritage, our nationality has been taken away from us, and we see the other heathen kids playing sports, so on and so on, why shouldn't we have the mindset to say, you know what, officer, can my son or my daughter, can they contribute more to the body? Can they do some things to, to build up the kingdom? Y'all with me? Y'all understand what I'm saying? So realizing what our forefathers saw, they saw the decayed state of our people, and they said, you know what, to hell with that. I have to fight for my people. So how do we fight today? We don't fight with fists. We don't fight with weapons. We fight with what? The scriptures. All right, we fight with the scriptures. We all have a job. We all have a role. So, when it comes to these children, these children need to be involved with the body. Like the officer said, these children need to be involved with things that's going to better the nation of Israel. All right, that's what this class is about. Forget all the nonsense. Forget all the sports. Let's, let's make a contribution for the betterment of our children and for the betterment of our nation. All right, let's read on. Verse 22, uh -huh. and recovered again the temple, renowned all the world over, and freed the city, and upheld the laws which were going down. 
the Lord being gracious unto them with all faith. Read. All these things I say being declared by Jason of Cyrene in five books. We will essay to a bridge in one bound. For considering the infinite number and the difficulty which they find that desire to look into the narration of the story for the variety of the matter. Uh -huh. We have been careful that they will read, may, that they that will read may have delight. And that they that are desirous to commit to memory might have ease. And that all into whose hands it comes might have profit. So what are they talking about? They're going into the scriptures. How to how to canonize the scriptures again. Because why? It was taken. So some of the scriptures were burnt. They had to recover the scriptures. So they have a council together. How can we canonize the scriptures again? All right? Read. Therefore to us that have taken upon us this painful labor of abridging. And it was not easy. But a matter of sweat and watching. What it, um, does anybody know what a bridge, a bridge, or a bridging means? Can you look that up? Um, what does that mean, brother? Then we put something um, back together. Yes. What else? All right. That's all you got. Anybody else? Okay. Go ahead. By making a connection. Making a connection. Right. So we're going to, let's read that real quick, officer. To shorten a book or movie without losing the sense. To shorten a book or movie without losing the sense. So for example, what do we have today that push, pushes the truth? Uh, a job in Israel that would meet that criteria of abridgment or abridging. Who can think of Think about it. A prevalent job that with Without this job, y'all, majority of y'all wouldn't even be in these seats. Brother Joshua. Is it flyers? No. Oh. Brother Zephaniah. The YouTube video? Right. Video editing. Editing. Putting the videos together. Editing. All right, that's what this is going into. In this situation, it was talking about bringing the books back together. But you have to understand, as editors, that takes time. That takes dedication. And it is a pain because you're doing what? You're laboring. It takes hours upon hours to pop out all of those videos, all of those documentaries, uh, so on and so on. Read the verse again. Leaving. Now, even as it is no ease unto him that prepared a banquet and seeketh the benefit of others, yet for the pleasuring of many we will undertake gladly. This is uh, 26. Therefore to us that have taken upon us this painful labor of a bridging, it was not easy, but a matter of sweat and watch. So they had to watch it, read it all over, I mean over and over and over again. Read. Even as it is no ease unto him that prepared the banquet. So it's saying it's the same thing. Someone who's over a big feast, think about Captain Judah Mack, Bishop Kanan, those who prepare the, the Passover. That is a pain. Understand, accounting for thousands of people, making sure everything goes to plan. All right, read on. And seek the benefit of others. And seek the benefit of others. So that's contrary to what? That's contrary to sports. Because these brothers took this uh, duty or this task upon themselves to do the work for who? For the nation. All right, read on. Yet for the pleasuring of many, we will undertake gladly this great pain. Uh-huh. Leaving to the author the exact handling of every particular and laboring to follow the rules of an abridgment. Read. For as the master builder of a new house must care for the whole building, but he that undertaketh to set it out and paint it must seek out fit things for the adorning thereof. Even so I think it is with us Read. to stand upon every point and go over things at large, and to be curious in particulars, belonging to the first author of the story. But to use brevity and avoid much laboring of the work, it is to be granted to him that will make an abridgment. Here then we will begin the story, only adding thus much to that which has been said, that it is a foolish thing to make a long prologue and to be short in the story itself. So everything is in the Bible. Everything is in the Bible. If you want to know how to be a great editor, there you go. It's telling you how to do it, how to take your time, how to do this, how to pay attention to particulars. But the reason why I went to the scripture is to show what? There's work to be done other than sports. All right? So... Parents, when it comes to these children, do just that. Think about other ways that these children can be beneficial within this body. So sports is not the only answer. Everybody understand that? All right, I just want to make sure, because I've been getting that question a lot lately. 
All right, um, let's go to the book of Romans. We almost done. We got uh, about three more. One and sixteen. Romans chapter one and verse sixteen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. So when it says to the Jew first, it's talking about the circumcision to the Greek, the uncircumcised. We touched on what the majority of the class? The Greekish captivity. That's when we became Greeks. Y'all understand that, right? All right, read on. But there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that they which made, no, made me known of God is manifest in them. But God showed it unto them. So it says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it unto them. It's, it's those who believed on Christ, all right? Those who had the understanding. Read on. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, uh -huh. being understood by things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Read. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. So it says, but they became vain in their imaginations. This is going into the Hellenistic period. We're going to get precepts to prove just that. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imagination. It's also going into uh, Northern Kingdom as well, um, aforetime. So give me the book of Acts 17 real quick. Acts chapter 17, uh, start at 16. Acts chapter 17 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him. So where was Paul? Read it again. Now while uh, Paul waited for them at Athens. So where are they at, brothers? Athens. Which is what? Greece. Greece. Read. His spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Uh-huh. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? So, Deacon, I thought I went into this not too long ago about the Epicureans and the Stoics. This is certain philosophy viewpoints. For example, some teach that self-pleasure is the epitome of everything. So they're philosophers who come and debate Paul while they're sitting in the marketplace. Read verse 18 again. Verse 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encounter him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Other, other some, he seemed to be a set of forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus in the resurrection. Read. And they took him and brought him unto Argopus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? Uh -huh. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time and nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. So they used to come here and gather to do what? To bounce ideas off of each other. Or to, what is it called? It's not called philosophy. It is, is it? Philosophy, I think it is called philosophy. So they're in the marketplace saying the greatest something is this, or the greatest gratification is to do this for yourself, or whatever. So they're coming saying eloquent quotes, time in and time, time after time, read on. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill uh -huh. and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Read. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore you eagerly worship him, declare I unto you. So it says, To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. Go back to Romans 1 and 21. Romans chapter 1 and verse 21. Uh -huh. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. So they're saying to an unknown God, saying they give a glory. You know, there is a God, but we're not going to give him the glory and honor that he deserves. They're going to say, 
Just like today, how the white man says, I know there's a greater power, but I don't believe in your God. It's the same thing. Read verse 21 all the way through. Because that when they knew, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful. But because they but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was dark. Read. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, uh -huh. and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image, made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. All right. So it says, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Jump down to verse 25. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creator, the create the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So we hear this in the streets all the time. We break it down as what? How do we break the scripture down? Let me hear my um, brother real quick. Verse 25, it says, Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. How do we normally break that down? Brother Odin. Um, right, right. We break it down as now they change the image into a lie, right? But in its context, what is it talking about? You're not sure? All right. Um, Brother Joshua, in its cultural context, what is this verse talking about? Talking about how we worship uh, Greeks, more than God. Right, the Greekish fashions. So, for example, you had the uh, the Stoics, the Epicureans, you had sports. So now, because of Hellenism, we now what? We now worship the creature, which is man, more than the Most High God, because of what we learn, but from our oppressors. That's what it's going into. Read that verse again. Verse 21, 20, verse 25. Five. Who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever? Amen. Read. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, but even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So it says vile affections. Who knows what that's talking about? Vile affections. Who knows what vile affections is talking about? Let me hear this brother right here on the end. Brother Schmidt, you don't know what vile affections are? Um, natural use. All right, go ahead, brother. Uh, I'm going to say homosexuality. Homosexuality, exactly. Vile affection. So, I got some more videos for y'all real quick. Click on uh, the one that says Oakdale. Click that one real quick. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, hey. So this guy plays football. He's been around men in spandex a long time. Look at his eyes. Watch his eyes. His brother don't shook his head. That's, that's a damn shame. Next video. Next video of Odell. Next video of Odell. I think it's the one right next to it. No, 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 no. The one before it. Yes, yes. Make it big. So he's in the tub with another man. This is a sport y'all want y'all children to play. Hey, that's unseemly. That ain't right. That is not okay. I don't care if you're teammates. That's not okay. All right, let's get a collegiate athlete. Let's go to the, uh, that one right there. Make that big. So this is during a game. He couldn't help himself. Watch this. Oh, that's the man. Oh, that's the man. Oh, gay! <laughs> and now this is the same brother after they won the national championship. Go to the next one. Watch this brother. It's the same brother who touched the man's booty and his, you know what? This is, this is how he celebrates after he wins. 
the National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Bullwear's making out with it. You're allowed this to ain't him. There he is. Actually, it's late. You know what? You can do what you want, man. You can do what you want. Clemson has earned the right to celebrate. Dance the Dance of Champions. Oh. Whoa! Wow. <laughs> so let's read the scripture again. Verse 26. Romans chapter 1 and verse 26. Uh -huh. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. Even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Read. And likewise, also, the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another. Burning their lust one toward another to the point where he's, he's in a jacuzzi with another man and he just pops up out of nowhere. All right, read on. Man, with that working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Uh -huh. and, as, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Read. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, mal maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, Proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. They have pleasure in wickedness. All right, that's the life of a professional athlete. Now, I want to close out with two scriptures. Go to First Timothy chapter four, verse eight. Um, is it a sin to work out? No, it's not a sin to work out. It's not. All right, and uh, Timothy, in his book, we're going to read about just that. First Timothy, chapter 4, and verse 8. Uh -huh. For bodily exercise profit of little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Right. Did you give me that, um, what was that, 40 something health in a good state of body? 30 and 15. 30 and 15, that one. Health in good state of body. All right. Sirach 30 and 15. Sirach to the 30 and verse 15. Health in good state of body are above all gold, and a strong body above infinite wealth. All right, so there is profit in working out. So I understand. It's one thing to be a part of these, these sports as we see that they're. they're they are wicked because in Romans 1, we just read a list of all of the spirits that come along with playing these sports. Is it a, is it a sin to uh, work out, stay in shape, go jogging, have a healthy diet? No, there's, that's not a sin. All right, go to Hebrews 2 and um, 1. Hebrews 2 and 1. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. So make sure you take points out of this class so when your children ask you about these things, you're able to teach it to them. All right? So you don't have to say, don't play sports, and then your child's mad at you. Why, you know, why not? Why can't I play sports? Take the time. Sit down with the children. Go over the scriptures with them. Go over history with them. All right? That's the end of today's class. If y'all have any questions, we got something. Yeah, I had one look. I just want to show y'all because the woman ain't excluded. This is the article. It says, X player claims 98% of the women in the WNBA are gay, and they bully straight players. The message was, we want you to know we don't like you, says former Liberty, New York Liberty, Candace Wiggins. So just like it's even stronger in women's sports, all right? So because they really desire to be that manly, that manly position. 98% are gay. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ.
YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube channels. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.